making, <laughs> making all these decisions, so it immediately applies to what they will be doing. So the theoretical model that I propose is that uh, is student engagement is the synergistic interaction between motivation and active learning. You have to have both. You can see how it does not make sense to say it's only, at least in education, it's not only motivation. You can have a classroom full of motivated students, and if they're not learning, I don't call that engagement. On the other hand, you can have a classroom full of students who are learning, but if they're feeling coerced and angry about it, that's not good. I think that you need both, but I have, for myself, identified three conditions that I think help build that synergy, and it's because if you were to read the book, they address both um, sides of that equation. And condition one is that the task has to be appropriately challenging. So somewhere between been there, done that, and dazed and confused is the unique position on that continuum for every individual student that is the perfect place for them to learn. And Vygotsky, Lev Vygotsky, who's the Russian theorist, talks about this as the zone of proximal development. Where you are, where you could be, and you have to be able to stretch to that uh, for learning. Now, in my own class, I have such diversity of students. Last year, I had a first-generation college student who came out of the migrant workers, and I had an emeritus Stanford physics professor. Now, I ask you, my friends, these are in my classroom. How do I approach that class with one set of tasks and information that is going to get both of those and everybody in between in their same perfect space of appropriately challenging. My second is that you have to build a sense of learning community. We were talking this morning and we were talking Wednesday about watching people walk down the road together, each checking their own smartphone and not interacting with each other. How, be sitting at a restaurant, my husband and I will go to a restaurant, there'll be a whole table and everybody's just sitting there working on their, like, Talk, people. Talk. Interact. This is the future of the globe is based on people being able to talk, not check something out on their smartphone. We know student preferences are to connect to a group. In fact, it's because they're checking on their smartphone, texting all the time, that it's so nerve-wracking for or so annoying to many of us in the classroom. So they are connecting, but it's through this little device. I saw this sign, and I wanted to share it with you. Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving if you want to meet him. <laughs> so they want to connect. We have to help them learn to connect with other human beings in the moment. And the reality of many of our classes and I doubt that this is happening in your institution, but it certainly is in mine. They are told to sit here like you are right now and listen to me. Um, in my own classes, I try and form base groups to force them to work together and learn to work together throughout the term. The third component is to teach for holistic learning. A college professors particularly tend to be very comfortable in the cognitive realm. And the cognitive realm is the thinking realm. That's where we were raised and where we flourish. But uh, we know from research that emotions can trump cognitive processing. And people who are teaching medial, remedial math know, they say, you have to get to the fear and the anxiety and address that before they can even begin to learn the kinds of cognitive processes. So I suggest that as you are looking at this, you try to find ways to cross domains, not only the cognitive domain, but the affective, the emotional feeling domain, the psychomotor domain, having people do things. And I personally believe in the moral domain because I think unless we help our students uh, see the ethical implications of what they're doing, we're in a very sorry, as a future. So from theory to practice, conditions that contribute to synergy, 
How do you help your students work at an appropriate level of challenge, feel like they're valued members of a learning mm -hmm. community, and interact within a community, and finally learn holistically? I wanted to share with you one of the most powerful things, of many powerful things I heard on Wednesday. And that was a woman who was teaching in the health areas. And when she had difficulty with engaging her students, she said she changed and she's experimenting with this, as I understood it, by requiring her students in their very first course to go to a hospital and observe what's going on there and see what people are doing in their different jobs and say, what would you like to do? What do you not want to do? Who would you like to be like? Who would you not like to be like? Why in our academic programs do we not have that as one of the very first things that students do? Instead of waiting till they're four, five, six, eight, ten 10 years out, thousands of dollars into it to go into a hospital or an equivalent space and say, hmm, I don't think I like that. Bit late. So it was a very powerful idea. So my theoretical model is that motivation or engagement is that synergistic interaction between motivation and um, active learning, and that it has these three conditions which contribute to the synergy. I am happy to answer your questions individually. We're not going to have questions now, but I did want to close with a few quotes. I like this quote, education is going forward from cocksure ignorance to thoughtful uncertainty. <laughs> I love this one. Education in America seems to be the only commodity of which the customer tries to get as little as he can for his money. Now, I'm sure that doesn't apply here in Trinidad, but it applies in the United States. But my favorite quote is from the Irish poet William Butler Yeats, who said, education is not filling a bucket, but lighting a fire. And I saw that after I came up with all my own stuff, and I thought, he's captured it so much more elegantly than me. Because filling a bucket is the metaphor for passive learning. He says it's not passive learning, therefore it's active learning. And motivation is the lighting the fire. So I came up with my own little way of remembering these different components. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier in the introductions that we must pass the torch to the next generation. Of course, the next generation has to be there to pass the torch both ways. But how do you pass a torch? You light the torch first. You have to have the torch on fire. So my five terms of engagement are motivation, active learning, that the task is tough, but not too tough, that we build a level of community, and that we aim for holistic learning. And I would propose that if you use that framework to look at what's happening in your classroom, what's happening in your life, what's happening in your own engagement in your institution as an employee or in your civic context, Something there is missing, and that's where you can target your energy. But I wanted to share with you two final quotes that I think are more hopeful. And one is from a colleague that I have so much respect for on my campus. She takes the most difficult students. That's her specialty, is taking the students who are failure accepting, who have been traumatized, and she works with them to try and help them find how to be in a higher education setting. And she says, teaching is a life of service. And as everyone knows, a life of service is well lived. And then I want to share with you one last quote. And it was from the winner of the Guardian Group uh, you, we uh, award last year at Kingston campus. And I found it very moving. And this quote didn't come from the professor, who is a professor of a sign language for the hearing impaired, but it came from a comment of one of the students. And I thought, we teachers have to remember this and aim for this. The student said, having you as my teacher has changed the course of my I'm going to share with you one last quote, and it's not up here. Because we get so overwhelmed, and we think, there's no way I can do all of this. It, it's really daunting. If you take teaching seriously, it is tough, tough, tough work. And when you look at all the challenges, it's so easy to say the students are broken. They're not. 
I can never overcome all the obstacles. And I just recently came across a quote that is attributed to the Dalai Lama, and this is a quote, I don't have a slide. It says, he said, if you think you're too small to make a difference, Try spending the night in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> Thank you.